Hi, I'm Eric Paulson, and I'd like to tell you about the helium recovery system we have here in the Instrument Center at Yale University, which is used to capture the helium from our NMR magnets and recover it so we can reuse it. The recovery system consists primarily of a series of manifolds, which are then attached to a header pipe along the wall. This header pipe routes the helium over to our liquefier system, which is in the basement of the adjacent building. The reason we want to recover helium is it's one of the most non-renewable resources there is. Um, other non-renewable resources that you might consider, such as oil, are not really non-renewable because when you burn the oil, it turns into carbon dioxide, but that carbon dioxide is still here in the atmosphere. And in principle, you could turn the carbon dioxide back into oil if you had enough energy. With helium, when we release it into the atmosphere, it travels up into the upper part of the atmosphere and escapes into space. And once it's gone, it's really gone. We can never get it back. The only way we could get back the helium would be to travel to another planet or some other place in the solar system to get the helium. So it's very important that we recapture the helium, not only because it's expensive, but because it's non-renewable. The reason we have to use helium is because we're using superconducting magnets. And superconductivity only occurs at extremely low temperatures. Over here is a cutaway of one of a, of a superconducting magnet. And you can see this part right here is bathed in a bath of liquid helium. In principle, we'd like to just keep the helium there forever and we'd be fine. But since it's so cold, even though we have enormous amounts of insulation protecting liquid helium, it still evaporates over time. So when it evaporates, it goes out of the top of the magnet, and if we don't recapture it, it just goes out in the atmosphere. But now with our recovery system, we can collect it, purify it, reliquify it, and then put it back into our magnet. Here you can see our helium recovery manifold in more detail. The helium comes out of the NMR magnet on these pipes here, and it comes into this T. One side goes through this large tube, and the other side goes through this small tube. The large tube is used for when we're doing helium fills. We open this valve, and the helium gas comes out through here, goes through this heat exchanger, and into the rest of the manifold. The reason for the large tube and the heat exchanger is when we're doing a fill, a lot of cold helium gas comes out, and we need to warm up the helium gas before it flows into the rest of the system, just so we don't collect ice and cool down the rest of the pipes in the system. We monitor the flow of the helium gas over here with these flow meters. An important thing about the flow meters is they need to have very low back pressure. So you can see this one has a piece of styrofoam in it. This helps cut down on the back pressure. If they had a normal float in there, it would be pushing back too much and restrict the flow of the helium. We can help determine whether the magnet is full by monitoring the flow. When the magnet fills up, the flow will rapidly increase because all of the helium we put in is immediately boiling and we can tell then that the magnet's full and we can stop. When we're finished, we close this valve again, and then the helium travels through this line, which is used for normal operation when we're not doing a fill. So normal operation, the flow is very small, and we can monitor it on this small flow meter right here. So it travels in here, we can see how much flow there is, and then it comes out here and goes through this back pressure regulator. The back pressure regulator keeps the helium pressure in the magnet slightly above atmospheric pressure. This help, helps protect the magnet from any fluctuations due to the rest of the system that might affect the pressure on the magnet. The magnetic field is affected by the pressure on the magnet, so we don't want, for example, a fill on another magnet to change the pressure on this magnet and possibly ruin somebody's experiment using the magnet. So this is set slightly above atmospheric pressure, but it allows the helium to flow through down this line into this valve here, where then it goes into the same piping as the large pipe. In either case, all of the helium flows up these large pipes and over into our helium recovery liquefier in the basement of the next building. Okay, now we're in the basement where our helium recovery liquefier and trap are located. As you can hear, it's quite noisy because there's a lot of mechanical equipment down here doing a lot of different things. The helium comes in on this large copper pipe right here. 
And the first place it goes is into the recovery bag, which is this large plastic bag up on the platform. The reason for the recovery bag is to minimize the pressure pushing back on the helium because the NMR magnets upstairs cannot tolerate very much pressure pushing back against it. So the helium flows into the bag and not very much pressure is pushing back against it. When the bag fills up to a certain level, it trips a laser sensor and turns on the helium compressor, which is located down here. The helium compressor pumps the helium out of the bag and into these large yellow compressed gas storage cylinders. Helium is stored in compressed gas form while we purify and liquefy it because the liquefying is the slowest part. So we need a reserve of helium gas so that we can continually process the gas and liquefy it. It travels from the compressed gas cylinders into our purifier trap here. Purifier trap consists of a doer containing liquid nitrogen and then a trap, which you can see here. This part is inside of the doer of liquid nitrogen. What happens is as the helium gas travels into the trap, all of the impurities freeze down in this part, and the only thing that comes back out is pure helium gas. After a while, the trap fills up, and we have to clean it out or regenerate it. So what we do is we take a clean trap and put it into the doer, and then take the dirty trap out and regenerate it by putting a vacuum on it and heating it to drive out all the impurities. Once we have the clean helium gas coming out of the purifier, it travels over to the liquefier where it's liquefied and stored in liquid form. Purified helium travels into the liquefier where it flows past the cold head, condenses, and is collected in our storage doer. The cold head condenses the helium by being colder than the liquefaction temperature of the helium. And the way that it works is it uses a separate set of helium gas as a refrigerant. It's got a compression and expansion cycle, which you can hear going back and forth. And as it compresses and expands the helium gas, the helium cools down until the cold head is cold enough that any helium gas coming in will condense on it and drip off into the storage door. We can monitor the amount of helium that we've collected on this panel over here. And you can see that we've collected about two-thirds full of helium in our doer. Well, we've collected enough helium that we have enough that we can then transfer it back into the NMR magnets. We take it from our storage doer and put it into a transport doer. The way we do that is we use a transfer line. And the first thing we need to do is pull down the transfer line so that we're putting liquid helium into the transfer door rather than helium gas or possibly impure helium gas. So right now, the helium is cooling down the center of the transfer line. And when it's completely cooled down, then we'll start to see a plume at the end, which indicates that liquid helium is coming out. When we have the plume, then we can put it into the transfer door. And we can collect helium in the transport doer. Helium gas is coming off while we're doing this because it's not completely liquid. And any of the helium gas that comes off is collected in this line right here, which goes back up into the bag, is then repurified, reliquified, and is available again for use. So we lose as little as possible. Once we've collected enough helium in the transport doer, then we can stop the transfer process. wait a little while for the pressure to reduce. And then once we're done, take out the transfer line. And take our transport door full of liquid helium back up to the NMR magnets where we can put it in the magnet. Okay, now we've made our way back to the NMR lab and we can transfer the helium back from the transfer door into the magnet. In this case, we're using a larger doer because we need a larger volume of helium for our larger magnet. Before we start transferring the helium, though, we need to measure the level of the helium in the doer to make sure we don't run out in the middle of the transfer. Because if we run out, then we could quench the magnet, and that would be very bad. One way to measure the helium level is to use a thumper tube, or also called a flutter tube, which 
allows you to measure the helium level by feeling the oscillations, sometimes called the Tychonus oscillations, that spontaneously happen when you put a tube like this into liquid helium. So we're going to do that. You come up here and open the top valve on the door, making sure that we avoid any helium that comes out. We do, in all cases, we want to make sure that we don't hurt ourselves with the cold gases or cold metal by touching them or putting our hands in, in the way of them. So in this case, I'm going to put the tube in. And it's going to start boiling off helium. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all the way down until it hits the bottom of the doer. Put a clip on to make sure that I've measured the bottom level. And then I put my thumb on here and I can feel oscillations that spontaneously happen. When I get to the surface of the helium, the oscillations change frequency. And so there I know that that's the top of the helium. So by measuring this distance here, I can relate it to the level on a chart here and know how much helium is in the, in the doer. In this case, there's plenty of helium for us to do our transfer. The next thing we need to do is to turn on the helium fill meter so that we build up some extra pressure inside the magnet. Because when we open up the magnet, we want to make sure that there's always positive pressure pushing helium out. We never want to let any air or water get sucked into the magnet, which would happen spontaneously if there's not positive pressure pushing helium out. So in this case, to do that, we just press a few buttons on the, on the fill meter and turn it into fill mode. This puts it in a mode where it does a reading every minute. And when it does a helium level reading, it actually turns on a resistor and heats up the helium slightly, which causes it to boil a little bit and makes positive pressure happen in the magnet. OK, so the next step is to begin the transfer process. Now we're ready to begin the transfer process. Transferring helium into an NMR magnet is best done as a two-person job. And in this case, I'm going to be assisted by Xiaoling Wu, who's a staff member in the CBIC and has done many helium fills. So the first step is to pre-cool the line by inserting it into the, into the door. As you insert the transfer line into the helium, some of the helium will start to boil and the cold gas will come out of the transfer line over here. So make sure to point the transfer line away from yourself at all times. It's also a good idea to wear gloves to protect yourself from any cold metal. While we're purging the line, we can close the valve that is for the pressure release on the valve. And eventually, we're going to turn on the pressure building heater here, which will intentionally boil some helium to help push it over and into the magnet. Now I'm going to go up to the top of the magnet. And I'm going to loosen the cap of the magnet here so that I'm ready to insert the transfer line as soon as we have a plume, which indicates that liquid helium has come all the way through the transfer line. Almost there. Okay. Now we are transferring helium into the magnet. In this case, we're building up a fair bit of pressure on the magnet because it's going out this line and into our helium recovery system. As it does, it's going to cool down this line and ice will start to form on the recovery system. While you're filling a magnet, it's very important never to run out of helium or to overpressurize the magnet. 
or to leave it open to the atmosphere for very long. Helium transfer process will take uh, 20 to 30 minutes. So when, when it's finished, all we need to do is release the pressure on the doer, wait for the transfer to slow down, take out the helium line, and close up the magnet again. This completes our video on the helium recovery process.